Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. And today, I'm gonna teach you doctor speak fracturing. Ah, ah. Have you ever wondered what your doctor was talking about when you go to the doctor's office? Me too. Uh -huh. Well, today's your lucky day because you're gonna find out. And after this video, I'll have you sounding like a surgeon and describing fractures like a boss in no time. So as doctors, it's important that we use common terminology so that when we describe things to one another, we are all sure that we're talking about the exact same thing. But over many years, we've developed a common set of terms that allows us to accurately describe fractures so that we know exactly what is going on, where it is happening, and what the fracture pattern looks like. With that in mind, let's get right to it and let me help you understand just exactly what your doctor is talking about. So before we start describing fractures, we first need to clear up a thing or two about fractures. Fracture describes a loss of continuity of the bone. A fracture and a break are the same thing. Wow. A dislocation, on the other hand, describes the loss of the relationship between two adjacent bones. A subluxation is a partial dislocation. A fracture dislocation is a break that has occurred near a joint, resulting in a loss of continuity of the bone and a disruption of the relationship between two adjacent bones. In other words, you've broken the bone and you've messed up the joint beside it. So now when we're talking about fractures, there's a few things that we need to know about those fractures to make sure that we've described them adequately. We need to know the type of fracture, the location of the fracture, and the severity of the fracture. There are several ways to describe the location of a fracture. And to do that, we need to have a frame of reference. Usually, the frame of reference uses typical position markers, such as the head, the tail, or the midline of the body. Proximal describes a fracture that is close to a frame of reference. Distal describes a fracture that is far away from the frame of reference. You know the game head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes? Yeah. Eyes, ears, mouth and nose. Do that with your fracture work. All the terms aren't in there. Add them onto your body. Like just sort of play it. Yeah, but because you you're best. talking about body parts, that's not talking about body it's parts. It's part about so directions. About locations. That's okay. Direction. You're just showing directions. Okay, sapalad. Yeah. Head Sapalad. towards the head. Caudad. It is towards, towards the feet. No. Towards the where? Towards the tail. Cephalad. And caudad. Caudad. Sing it. No, sing. I am not singing it. Cephalad. I, I am not singing it. Turn around. Cephalad. Cephalad and caudad. Not singing it. Okay. There's medial Me towards the midline. Here's the midline. Here's the midline. Medial. There's the midline. Right there. Okay. Towards the midline. Got it. Lateral. Away from the midline. Like over there. Or way over there. Right. Not here. Not here. Right. Ventral or anterior on the front. Like here. Yeah. Posterior dorsal. Okay. On the back. We'll see. Superior near the top. Like I'm better than you are. Well, no. Inferior. Wolfie's brain is on the bottom. Down there. Like you started from the bottom, and now we're here. I think the way Drake said it sounds better. Inferior. We started inferior, and now we're superior. So for example, if your doctor says that you have a fracture of the lateral malleolus, he's talking about this, the outside part of your ankle. Malleolus is one of the ankle bones and lateral means the outside or away from the midline. Location terms can also be described to give more specific directions such as anteromedial or posterolateral. Once we've described the location of the fracture, it's also important for us to tell what type of fracture it is. A closed fracture is one that has occurred completely beneath the skin. An open or a compound fracture is one that has broken the skin so that the bones are exposed to the air or the environment around you. A simple fracture is one that occurs without a complex fracture fragment and usually only has two fragments. One piece here and another piece here. A complex fracture is one that has several or many fracture lines. A comminuted fracture is one that has multiple fracture fragments. In other words, your bone is in a million pieces, like I mean a million pieces, or five. A green stick fracture is a fracture where one side of the bone is broken and the other is only bent, like this. Not like this. The term green stick comes from trees. You know, like the branch of a tree breaks, but not all the way through and it's kind of bent but it's only partially broke? Yeah, like that. An oblique fracture is a fracture that has occurred on an angle relative to the axis of the bone. The bone is like this, and a simple fracture happens like this, then the oblique fracture would be like this, like a ramp. A spiral oblique is a fracture that has circled around the bone in a diagonal fashion so that the fracture lines don't meet. Do you remember that slide that used to go down as a kid? And you go, 
all the way down the circle, down to the bottom. That's a spiral oblique fracture. It goes all the way down the bone. It goes all the way down the bone. Not in a straight line. So in other words, you start at point A and go around the bone, you wouldn't end up at point A. You would end up at some other point, point B, further away from point A. Okay. You got that? An impacted fracture is a fracture where the fragments have been crashed together. Cra crash together. Like if you jumped off the roof and smashed your femur into your tibia. Or your tibia into your talus. Or your calcaneus into the ground. Don't do that. A distracted fracture is one where the fracture fragments have been pulled apart. One way where it might happen is if you were to have been dropped from a height onto something solid like a concrete fence or something and one half of your leg was over one part on the outside of the fence and the other was on the inside of the fence and your leg went right over the top but because of the force was so great because you were falling towards the ground the two fracture fragments were pulled apart. Angulation describes fractures that are bent. An angulation is described by the point away from which the fracture this is, is my angled part. and by the point towards which it I is love angled. Hearing this. You have to describe the can apex, this too? which is or the is point it where it's can? angled from, yeah, and then you need to say where it is angled towards. Anterior, posterior, ventral, dorsal. Like a pyramid? No, more like a map. Where are you talking about? You would describe the degree of angulation or the direction of angulation. This is good. Is this animals? Instruments? You have apex volar dorsal angulation. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Or apex dorsal volar angulation. Yeah, I got it. Which just means that it's bent away from the front angle to the back, or it's bent from the back angle to the front. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Translation, on the other hand, is used to describe fractures where the position of the fragments is not normal. Translation is described by the direction towards which the fracture is moved, such as translated superiorly or translated laterally. Do you get it? It's just terminology. Sometimes we want to know if the fracture occurs at near or around This is the my joint. favorite part. Extraarticular fractures are those that occur outside of the joint. Intraarticular fractures are those that occur inside the joint. Yeah, I got it. Periarticular are those that occur around the joint. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. And partial articular are those fracture patterns that extend from outside of the joint to inside of the joint. Or maybe inside of the joint to outside of the joint. An intraarticular fracture is kind of like an indoors dinner party, whereas an extraarticular fracture is kind of like an outdoors barbecue. A partial articular fracture is kind of like a party where you got to go outside to get the drinks, come back inside to chat with everybody. It's kind of like a mishmash. Okay. And finally, it's important for us to describe where on the bone the fracture has occurred. And we do this using the growth plate or the part of the bone that grows as a reference marker. If this is the tibia bone, up here, that's the epiphyseum, or the epiphyseal end. And then the growth plate, even though I'm done growing, it's right about there, so that's the physeal part. And then this part, which is close to the growth plate, but before the growth plate, is called the metaphyseal part of the bone. What? Epiphyseal, or epiphyseum, physeal, metaphyseal, diaphyseal. Say it again. The whole bone doesn't grow. The bone grows at the ends. All so right. the oldest part of the bone is the middle part of the bone, which is the diaphyseal part of the bone. The parts of the bones that grow at the ends, at both ends, are called the physis. Bone's in the middle, it's short, mm -hmm. and then the physis grows. The part that's outside the physis is called the epiphysis. The part that's been has been following the growth plate, that's called the metaphysis. And then the part in the middle, which is the old part of the bone, which doesn't really grow, that's the diaphysis. So, epiphysis, physis, metaphysis, diaphysis, metaphysis, physis, epiphysis. But that's only for long bones. It's not the same for flat it's bones. It's kind of like a sandwich, is what you're saying. In essence, your leg is a sandwich. And there you have it, everything is clear as mud. That's it for teaching you doctor speak, the fracture edition. If you like the video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because you know what else would you be doing. Boy, that escalated quickly. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. <laughs>